90 percent of the frauds are not happening because of chip and pin transaction today transitioning from a run-of-the-mill job to start a world uh, you're not learning every day you're learning every hour actually issue the rupee credit card in less than three minutes five apps on the phone which you use to uh, manage your credit card are all combined into kiwi today's guest is mohit Bedi, a seasoned fintech and ba- banking professional and he's the co-founder of India's first credit on UPI startup, Kiwi. Uh, starting up after a very successful career of more than 20 years at Citibank, Barclays and Axis, Mohit and Kiwi are all set to disrupt the credit card industry and the credit industry with a no-hassle, free-for-life credit card. Under Mohit's guidance, Kiwi forged partnerships with Axis Bank, issuing over 30,000 credit cards. Join us as we talk to Mohit about all things fintech, product managers and building credit for a price-conscious country. Mohit, welcome to the podcast. Oh, great to have you, Averil. I've heard so much about you. I have some Thank colleagues you. who are uh, voluntarily working. And uh, voluntary, I mean, it is amazing that you've been able to build something with volunteers. It hats Thank off you. to the effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are missing Mazin today, but um, he's, he's usually there on the pod. Yeah. So I'll be taking this. Um Mohit, we begin with a fun round, which is rapid fire. Uh, Coffee with Karan's over, but we are all season long. Uh, So we'll start with, if you could be a professional in any other field unrelated to what you do, what would it be and why? I would uh, actually become a tennis player. I I love tennis. I play morning, evenings tennis whenever I'm free. In fact, I I participated in ITF tournaments also. Oh, really? Some friends encouraging me. So in the 45 plus category, actually over the weekend, we had an ITF tournament in Mumbai. So I I love uh, playing sports, uh, any racket sports. Wow. Uh, I played tennis. I've, I've in fact uh, also par- participated in the racket lawn. I, in fact, that was happening in the morning uh, before we had this podcast. Wow. I think it's why you don't look 45 plus. Uh, oh. I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have guessed. Uh, <laughs> I, I know years of experience, so I could work it out. But if I didn't know that, definitely couldn't have. That's, that's, Thanks, that's awesome. Three things that you hate about finance jobs. Uh, three things. Bureaucracy. Uh, hmm. Everybody doesn't do what they're paid to do. Hmm. Uh, and it's too run-of-the-mill and cliche. Okay. <laughs> cool. That, that, that was pretty quick. So it seems like you have, you have thought about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the startup world, uh, it, it was like uh, transitioning from a run-of-the-mill job to startup world. Hmm. Uh, I think uh, you're not learning every day, you're learning every hour. So hmm. oh, the whole norms of the industries have changed. No, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's and amazing. I'll share some things uh, over no, the course no, of absolutely. Time. One question you would ask yourself if you were the AJVC host, this is our lazy way of doing the interview. <laughs> Uh, to myself? Yes, to yourself. I would ask that, why the hell did you get into this? So I'm going to ask that to you right now. Why the hell did you get into this? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll keep that for later because it will come. Yeah, it'll yeah. Come in the... Okay. Uh, bootstrap versus funded? Uh, funded uh, uh, is a... Uh, if you're doing something at scale, uh, funded is a much better option. Hmm. Uh, I And clearly, it gives you that leverage to... Uh, think and take more risks. Hmm. How would you describe your company's culture with three phrases or adjectives? So, uh, friendly, uh, cooperative, and always curious. Hmm. Then sound like a bank. I, uh, I hope so. <laughs> maybe except cooperative. Yes. <laughs> maybe not even that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, What's one one truth few people agree with you on? What's one that you, truth? That you really believe in and people uh, disagree with you. That Kiwi can actually make a big dent uh, into the Goliaths of the world, which is Google Pay and Phone Pay. Hmm. So that, that that's why you, like a lot of times we get this answer, which is the startup itself. Like a lot yeah. of founders say my big truth is the company which you've started. It's yes. always, it's always good. It's always good to know. Um, no, super. Uh, would love to talk through your life journey uh, and motivations. I'll ask you the question that you said you would ask yourself, which is why the hell are you doing this? Um, so 
you you were a pm at ge in in the 2000s um what was your experience then like can you talk through how you ended up there maybe just you know early days growing up how you ended up there and what did you learn and this is a time when pms obviously were not probably i mean i'm i'm assuming yes. were not as sexy a job as it is today um uh, so it would be great to walk through that as well yes absolutely and this was the year 2000 uh, we were uh, so there was a uh, boss of ours uh, or who, actually it was headed by a person called ikbal singh uh, who okay. was the head of g sbi cards and cards were just coming into vogue this was the oh, year so 2000 g, g had a, a joint venture with sbi yeah. for cards yeah. you guys don't even okay you were not even born in that era or no i was born uh, yeah. you probably wasn't i was very young i was 7 yeah, so yeah. so g and sbi uh, cards was a joint venture uh, and uh, g had uh, 49% stake sbi had 51 and all that oh. at that point of time and g uh, sbi cards wanted to launch credit cards in india and that's where g capital which was the financial arm had mm. uh, come uh, had come into india and uh, did that partnership so we were the first batch of management trainees ekbal singh actually had joined from uh, uh, hindustan levers limited hln yes. at that point of time right and he was of the culture that management trainees are what build the foundation uh, mm. of the organization correct correct and that's when there were eight of us uh, we are still in touch we we are called the batch of 2000 in that organization yeah and, uh, the eight uh, we all eight of us started off and we were like a typical uh, hindustan lever style we were made to do rotations in of three months in each department and mm. then they said ki uh, great you learned everything now go to a rural posting although mm. a rural posting in that point of time was bhopal ludhiana indore lucknow uh, all those uh, places there was sort of like tier two locations and they we were made to do a sales stint for two years So we did a rotation for uh, three three months, then did a two year sales rotation, and that's when we joined product because mm. of that uh, HLL philosophy that Iqbal had, and we are still all eight of us are in touch with each other, and we are in touch with Iqbal also. But uh, that's what set the ground running as to how do you experience customers and convert it into products. And credit card mm. is a very transactional product, right? Or or mm. it, you touch each and everything on a daily basis. and uh, from then on is when product management journey started right once you had approximately two and a half three years of sales plus uh, interdepartment experience and that's what led to launch of new products right we uh, in fact during my product management stint i launched the doctor's card which i'm very famous for in fact uh, if you ask my sbi cards colleagues they call me doctor baby is because oh. we, yeah so they used to and what is what was his doctor's card for i'm so i'm so, so curious about was, so we had tied up with uh, indian medical association okay. and we had given the card to, because doctors was a very risk free community right hmm. so right. Uh, you could underwrite them properly and hmm. we were in fact uh, at that uh, right now though you get miles and reward points as welcome benefits we were giving stethoscopes as welcome oh. benefits <laughs> fascinating so, that was mm. the nascent stage and we used to give stethoscopes we used to give uh, membership discount on indian medical association uh, memberships and all that and we were in, uh, i mean uh, the product was really catered to doctors specifically uh, mm. we were doing local advertising for their clinics and all that etc uh, etc et but that card was a uh, that card did decently well and that's how i got my got the name of dr bedi during my sbi card stint but it was that's a great it. learning experience i mean uh, uh, once you do a two year sales stint in a city like bhopal uh, where uh, you were interacting with customers and it's a government town right hmm. so that sets the tone to design products uh, very well where where are you from originally mohit so dad was in the army so we were uh, traveling everywhere uh, so my life was uh, mostly in hostels and various uh, army cantonments Hmm. but then we settled down in delhi i mean okay. you can make out i'm more or less like a delhi punjabi kind hmm. of a person hmm. so we settled down in delhi but we roamed around everywhere that was posted in bareilly mau uh, we were posted in uh, bhopal also for some time so we right. we roamed around everywhere right why i was asking that was because if you are in a big city your whole life going and selling in bhopal can be a very yeah, yeah. Uh, cultural shock and actually um, we we were doing all all of us were made to do door to door selling do you know this uh, 
like and like and unilever yeah 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 absolutely mm. so uh, that that mindset was very clear uh, when ikbal told do us you, that do you think that's a good good way to groom young talented people i think it is uh, it is the best way because in our organization today also when some product manager or uh, some new trainee joins in we tell him to just sit with customer service make some calls so mm. for example if we have said of uh, let's say uh, uh, 500 or inactive customers who've not transacted for a month right mm. we tell him just pick up the phone be polite to them talk to them what happened why ha- why did it happen mm. so there were times when these management trainees have come back to us and said i think this and this has happened mm. then we had to tell them see now the, the power of questionnaire comes into picture mm. make a questionnaire put that inputs and then come back to us so these mm. things are a learning experience for them if you tell them everything up front i don't think they learn but uh, mm. we ensure that every trainee and product manager to- speaks to at least 10 customers a day fascinating um my my dad was part of tata steel's gt batch so i i know when you say this batch thing uh, a yes. lot of a uh, lot of these large organizations which have these well oiled graduate trainee programs uh, it's almost like college extended by a few years um and he's in touch also with his gt batch like many yeah, of yeah. them uh, your group seems smaller but uh, his gt batch was like 150 wow uh, so oh. i mean jamshedpur the whole city started yeah. still they recruit a yeah. lot of people so yeah, so yeah it, it was it was big um and was this stump, your first experience with credit was it by choice or you just kind of stumbled into it because it was your first job and things like that no it was by accident you're right i just stumbled upon this uh, and credit card industry was actually growing starting to take off uh, yeah i can't the- believe like ge had a joint venture with sbi just yeah, still yeah. processing that yeah, uh, yeah i in fact i tell my product managers that we used to read books of jack welch they first <laughs> who is jack welch i said boss tum let's move forward <laughs> yeah let's move forward they definitely are born after 2000 i know who jack welch is i i did have his book i threw it and fortunately yeah, yeah. uh because it was lying in the library and i didn't have yes. space yes. Uh, so, but it was a fascinating thing right uh, yeah. so hum logo ne jack welch ji sab kuch shuru kiya and it was by accident that uh, our we got a ppo actually we were doing summers in uh, in gsbi Hmm. and we uh, and summers ke liye everybody picks you up for sales right so so for a sales profile and we did well and all eight of us, I, i mean all eight of us got a ppo so hmm. the headache of uh, sitting for interview rounds and etc in campus also were done and dusted hmm. so it was a very fascinating journey nice that's amazing and then uh, you know you spent time at ge and then you worked at multiple banks uh, yes. what were your learnings from them is there anything you can use to describe maybe each of them something in that culture something that stayed with you because they were all banks at the end of the day yeah, but yeah. um how, how would you describe them was there something a word you could probably use for each so, of them or an adjective so actually g was the foundation laying stuff uh, but i was doing uh, very high level stuff post g is when i joined uh, city bank Uh, hmm. and i again had two stalwarts as my bosses ritu rana and kushal roy but C- city was the first time i got experience around pnl so hmm. my entire learning actually i am indebted to what city did uh, hmm. made me learn uh, and that that point of time city was mecca for all payment professionals correct uh, so for all cardies uh, who came out of uh, city bank hmm. uh, they, they went went ahead and Uh, did really well in the payments uh, business okay so city was like where i learned everything and all my grooming etc happened from uh, city bank uh, from city is when i moved to barclays again barclays was the launch of the cards business i did cer- certain amount of uh, partnerships and co-branding etc so learned product and then co-branding there hmm. but uh, then stanchard and then access hmm. so access was when Uh, i realized the difference between a, uh, a mnc bank and a uh, indian private sector bank hmm. the scale etc was exponentially different so i was managing the products for credit card debit cards and prepaid cards for the entire access bank so hmm. imagine the base size was 2 crores plus customers hmm. Hmm. so uh, every every decision could move mountains right because hmm. even if 
you give a 10 percent cash back imagine the yeah, sheer the magnitude of the pnl uh, that correct. used to happen correct so that's when you got a exposure of how decisions at scale make a difference in life right hmm. so uh, th- those uh, seven eight years at access were uh, really awesome they are unbelievably uh, great years and were you doing credit cards through and through uh, so, on... uh i did uh, access is the last place where i did four years of credit card and four years of acquiring so uh, okay. there is issuing and acquiring business uh, hmm. so when i left uh, uh, when i was in the cards business uh, we actually reached number 4 from number 6 uh, in india in terms of ranking hmm. in acquiring business we were actually processing close to 30000 crores of volumes per month I mean, uh, when I used to beat my team at Access in acquiring, we used to tell them that every time you blink, six transactions happen through our payment network. So Amazing. that's the scale we were managing. And uh, th- so th- unlike a razor pay or a pay you, which only manages payment gateway business, Access is both POS and payment gateway, right? Hmm. So everything was included, QR. And I was there acquiring it during the demonetization time. Hmm. which was, I think, by far the most exciting time because you had to enable the digital infrastructure. Hmm. So we were part of the government meetings where Piyush Goyal was chairing and all the bankers were sitting as to how do we manage demonetization and uh, create digitization, uh, etc. So th- those, those that period of demon was like uh, awesome. Hmm. Till what were, year were you at Access? So I was there till, uh, so not uh, two years back, to 2021. Okay, so you were there when the Magnus card and all were. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what? I had launched my marquee product that uh, happened during my tenure uh, was not Magnus actually was Vistara, oh. because that was the first partnership that Vistara did, right? So and that Vistara Black card, uh, uh, the features are so good. It until date, uh, Touchwood they've not been diluted a lot. Yes. Uh, so that that was the agreement uh, at that time we had had uh, with Vistara. So it will always remain the most powerful Vistara card in the Vistara stable and it's doing fantastically well. Hmm. So I love that product. In fact, that's my primary card after Kiwi now. Wow. <laughs> you are a user of two of the products you created. So that's yes. at least, I mean, yes. I, I don't know if you have... Uh, no, I don't have any other product. I don't and maybe we are going to a tangent, but this is interesting and personally for me also why do banks devalue cards or remove features because you alluded to it with Vistara it happened with Magnus and every like a lot of people including me I'm a Magnus user were like very upset uh what 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 is the what goes behind the scenes like from a bank perspective so it's purely uh, gaming basically see you Hmm. uh, when you make products you create certain features uh Hmm. and you expect certain amount of gaming right uh, mm. That PNL account uh, says that if uh, uh, every PNL has a threshold of gaming that can happen, right? Mm. Can you explain this because I I wouldn't exp- I understand what you are saying, uh, yeah. but can you elaborate on what gaming so means? Let's, let's say let's say lounge access for example, mm. correct? It's the simplest thing to say. Mm. Now every PNL uh, or the product manager says that I am expecting let's say three percent to five percent usage of lounges, correct? By mm. customers, and that. Uh, three to five percent will have let's say one percent impact on my PNL in the hmm. costing. One percent of uh, of my total cost will come will will be required to fund those launch costs. Hmm. However, at certain point of times, so there is a uh, there is a circuit breaker like stock markets hmm. that if it goes to seven, it's tolerable and keep a watch for it. Correct. If the usage goes from three to five to seven percent. But if it goes to 10% is when the PNL suddenly starts looking really bad, right? Hmm. If you are expecting 3 to 5% usage, the product manager starts keeping a Hawkeye if it is 7% usage. But if it touches 10% is when alarm bell starts ringing, correct? And that's when you start taking a call uh, because your, your card needs to survive for a longer period of time. Hmm. And uh, the other thing is that let's take lounge only for example you are expecting 3 to 5 percent people using or or 10 percent have used this time when you devalue then actually the impact is on the delta 5 percent customers that had started using it correct Hmm. so while those 5 percent go out on social media and various platforms criticizing that why have you devalued the impact in number of customers is traditionally never been more than uh, a single digit percentage. Very interesting. 
and this this gaming is because you want to acquire and retain users is that is that why what gaming means gaming, and yes. another sorry another so, follow up question is how like how are you looking at a card as surviving long term is it like a treated like a pnl itself as a company uh, sub product so i i i'll give you an example uh, different banks approach cards business in a different manner Hmm. uh so for example uh let's say in access at least i know that they treat credit cards as a overall pnl so hmm. some product make great profit some product are let's say for affluent customers which are let's say 30 40 000 customers and they might bleed because at overall level which is their savings account business and other cross sell businesses they will make money hmm. but not all cards make money not not 100% of cards will never make money right the mm. affluent cards will probably break even or maybe make some amount of losses but the bottom end cards end up making enough money right mm. so cards will cards is always treated like a complete business mm. however there are certain small banks right they have very minuscule cards businesses and they have very few product lines correct so let's take if i was in a situation like rbl bank right they have bajaj and then they have very few other card portfolios where they are very dependent on co brands right hmm. that is the situation when each product line needs to be profitable and they can't be dependent on a, a complete cards business pnl so it depends on situation to situation where banks are in the stage of evolution understand very interesting i think we can do a whole session on on the cards business and i think yeah, a lot yeah. of people would be interested Uh, yeah, yeah. but but it's, it's pretty fascinating so you've been doing cards for so long yeah uh, and we discussed this earlier are you crazy to do cards again why wouldn't you just stop and chill no so all one is all city bankers live and breathe cards uh, hmm, unlike okay. a city banker you can't take a cards business out of a city out banker, city banker okay. bank out of cards business <laughs> so uh, we all love uh, cards industry and uh, we uh, all of us uh, at our heart want to uh, leave a uh, leave a mark in the industry right because mm. we've given so much uh, to the industry in terms of innovations in terms of surrogates in terms of alternate underwriting uh, mechanisms uh, etc so at the heart of it we want to create innovations and take it forward that's the crux of what we're trying to do hmm and why did you decide to do this more like personally you've, you've had so much experience financially sorted um why not just play tennis uh no so ek to na i have very uh, siddharth and anup who, who are my co-founders hmm. uh we are very close friends right and we hmm. we all three of us have been in payment matlab if you combine our experience uh, all three of us together would be 65 70 years of uh, experience with cards business but uh, ultimately uh, when all three of us were talking to each other uh, we wanted to look at a uh, look at a channel which could be our last uh, last way of leaving a impression in the payments industry we wanted mm. to leave a lasting legacy and all of us are 40 plus uh, mm. I, while i look 16 but <laughs> yes i'm 40 <laughs> all of us are 45 matlab at least me and siddharth are 45 plus anup is the youngest uh, out hmm. of all three of us hmm. but uh, we all know that we have energy for another 10 years probably right. max right and we uh, we can only do this once right unlike other uh, startup founders that we meet this their, that's their third or fourth startup so this is like a last hurra we are banking completely on it uh, hmm. and uh, we are banking completely on it to leave a lasting impression on the payments industry in uh, for all the experience and knowledge that three of us have, have right so that's the motivation uh, monetary nice. is not uh, as much we as long as there is uh, food coming in the house we are fine all three yeah. of us but we for sure want to uh, leave a lasting le- legacy uh, as far as the industry is concerned that that's awesome and you built so many cards previously uh how do you get a wedge in as a new company or new startup can you talk to us about what is kiwi's value proposition what does a upi enabled credit card mean why is it yeah. a big deal or why do you believe it will be a big deal um yeah. what, what what is it that you are using to get in so uh, this is basically credit on upi uh, mm-hmm. we, when we were uh, uh, when we were transitioning uh, 
all of us were in the Siddharth is basically the was the ex CEO of for free charge okay. and uh, Anoop who's the third co-founder was the business head of lazy pay and uh, we were discussing uh, what was happening in the industry in terms of credit on UPI because UPI we know is big we all knew credit on UPI will be big however uh, we knew the fintech world and the banking world if will have to work together in order to scale the credit on UPI uh, what, what does credit on UPI mean can you explain that so credit on UPI is that uh, when you scan when you go to a shop right uh, mm. let's say uh, let's say aap bade pav vada pav wale ke paas you're going right mm. you're in pune i'm yes. and you would know there are multiple vada pav vendors and you mm. scan the qr right there is a bharat qr or a, uh, uh, or a paytm qr or any qr you take out your phone you most likely will do a google pay or a phone pay transaction or a paytm mm. transaction mm. Uh, by the looks of it you would have google pay i'm more, more or less pretty sure you're using google pay yeah. so you can <laughs> You I, feel, I, I feel known and examined, but yes, no, that's absolutely right. We have done so much research that we have found that who uses Google Pay, who uses Phone Pay, and who uses Paytm. Yeah. So, but yeah. now we know in and out. So, yeah. you scan the QR and you pay, let's say, 50 rupees or 25 rupees. Uh, you scan the QR and you pay, let's say, 50 rupees or 25 rupees. Right now, you go, get an option of paying by savings account, right? Yes. Uh, Correct. So what credit credit on UPI does is, besides uh, savings account, it gives you an additional option of paying by credit card. Hmm. So if you have a rupee card, uh, you can link it to any of the apps. Basically, credit uh, rupee credit card helps you pay through the rupee credit card network, hmm. and you get the same benefits as a credit card. So you pay twenty five rupees, you through your rupee credit card, you get fifty days interest free credit. You get the regular reward points that a credit card uh, comes with, and you can uh, keep and you get declutter your savings account statement, etc. Everything happens. So it works like a so it's like a virtual card. You actually don't need a physical mm. card or a post terminal. The merchant also doesn't need a post terminal. So mm. that's that's how powerful the credit credit on UPI ecosystem is. And, and why can't we do it today? You mentioned a rupee network, so maybe you can explain to our listeners what are different card networks, Mastercard, yeah. Visa. Um, yeah. Like why is it so, not possible today, and why why are you relevant in that context? So right now uh, in India there is. Uh, 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 rupee visa master diners jcb uh, these are mm. uh, and american express and amex yes yeah. mm. but as per the rbi guideline only uh, rupee card uh, has been allowed to work on the upi network mm. as far as credit card transactions are concerned uh, i mean there are discussions on within rbi that they will sooner or later might allow visa master etc other networks but yeah. as we speak it's only on rupee network now, why does Kiwi become relevant is uh, you know that the penetration of physical rupee cards or rupee credit cards in India, when we launched was less than 1%. Right now also, okay. it's less than 3%. Okay. So, less than 3% of the credit card population have a rupee card. Hmm. Besides that, uh, there are 30 million credit cards uh, in India. But the, the underwritable population is 100 million, right? If you include mm. the EMI Bajaj card population, the debit EMI population, etc. So the number of people actually you can uh, you can give a card to is anywhere between 80 to 100 million. Now, but a rupee card available with these uh, these uh, customers is less than 3% right now as right. far as the added population is concerned. So where Kiwi became relevant was that we were part we are partnering with banks in uh, this is not a co-brand. This is we hmm. issue the rupee cards of the bank, enable the issuance, and actually issue the rupee credit card in less than three minutes. Less so, than three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we do is you download the app, you fill the form, you do video KYC, and you your card is generated and you are linked to the Kiwi app. Hmm. Uh, and you can start going to your Vada Power vendor, to Chromas of the world, to anywhere, and start using it also immediately and get the fifty days etc credit uh, instantly correct so one relevant piece is that we actually help banks issue the card digitally the whole process is digital uh, from uh, application form filling to video kyc etc uh, just to point to note is that the underwriting norms and uh, etc is as per the bank we don't get into all that so the approval rates are as per bank's policy so there mm -hmm. will be a waterfall right out of every 100 customers maybe 40 or 35 will get a credit card so those right. norms still remain 
which is true for any other cards business correct hmm. so first first solution we were coming up with is actually giving rupee cards to customer second is we then worked with npci and became a tpap now tpap is a third party application hmm. in payment terms uh, google pay phone pay are tpaps hmm. which are which are uh, fintech apps where you can do upi transactions on apps through which you can do a upi transaction on so we part uh, we took the help of npci and became a app like google pay and phone pay hmm. so i'll again explain the journey now you've downloaded the uh, app you've got a credit card you link your card to our app which is a upi app hmm. and you start doing transactions immediately hmm. and you won't believe it that uh, out of uh, i mean we have a because of this process we have a 85 to 90% activation rates on our card wow where industry ho- hovers around 30 to 40% so because you're car- getting the card instantly you can link it and start using it immediately right and uh, i'll tell you what other advantages are there so now i've we saw we are trying to solve for issuance of rupee card uh, by enabling banks to issue on through our platform we took npc as help to you for usage right besides that most likely you've used your card now you will go to cred or some place else to pay the bills or you'll mm-hmm. go to banking app to let's say switch off ecom transactions or manage your limits etc but on our app for all products that are issued through kiwi all cards that are issued through kiwi right now with access bank uh, you can actually pay your bill you can uh, you can manage your limits you can fraud block your card immediately so mm. everything is on one app so imagine there is a issuance that happens on our app usage that happens on our app and managing of card everything is on everything one app, on app. Mm. basically we say that five apps on the phone which you use to uh, manage your credit card are all combined into kiwi nice and you are so, also uh, a life free for life card yeah 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 uh, how is that like what what what's the so see, see the pricing of the card credit card na is uh, basically banks do joining fees and annual fees on the card is primarily because you want people to be serious when they are getting the card right right correct it is not it is not that big a revenue stream in fact mm. out of the the total fee income that bank earns this is probably not even 10% of the fee income the it's annual it's much to use is what you're yes. saying yes so mm. basically uh, you don't want people to take the card for fun of it yes <laughs> if somebody pays he's serious about getting the card mm. and why they do it is because activation rates thereof are better right so a free for life card the activation rates will be around 30 40% and a paid mm. card activation rate would be uh, 50 60% mm. however in our case we were seeing 80% activation rate so it was futile asking for a few, joining an uh, annual fee mm. right and so why were that, you seeing that any hypothesis on is it because of your customer base like who are you going after so one is that and second is the credit on upi ecosystem no encourages upi transaction correct hmm. so aapko ek bada i'll give you a very simple example right uh, in india there are post terminals right a credit hmm. card can be used only on post terminals there are only 80 lakh post terminals in india as per rbi data right 80 lakhs as in uh if you go to shopper stop there are 10, 10 terminals they are count, counted in the 80 lakhs as 10 terminals hmm. so there are 80 lakh terminals however outlets will be one uh, around uh, at max 30 20 to 30 lakhs which hmm. except uh, because uh, which have a point of sale terminal but the upi credit on upi is accepted at all qrs which, whether yes. it is bhim whether it is bharat pay phone pay imagine your number of places where it can be accepted is 250 million hmm. it is 30x it is 30x so even if you go to northeast where during demon uh, our first agenda was to enable digital transaction in northeast when i was in access imagine there is a qr there where you can just scan and pay there is no electricity re- required no network required nothing just print a qr and put so just just that uh, that that pi increased for additional acceptance points which increased the activation right hmm. uh, so that was a big big game changer very the interesting pay- so you're expanding the areas and places where you can pay like yeah, i for example we don't, we, 
we don't issue any physical plastic yeah it, it, not even a single plastic we issue like a lot of the sabzi wala is around yes. me many of yeah, them yeah. accept cards but some of them don't accept cards i'd i'd love to use my magnus but i have to use upi <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so but uh, it's at the it was just a uh, I'll keep giving you interesting data points, but I'll just give you one more interesting data point. So I was in one of the conferences recently, and I, all cards had all of us are uh, uh, friends only, right? So ICICI mm. Bank and Yes Bank are cards had Anil and Amarjit, all of us were there. And I was telling him that my 80 to 85 percent transactions happen on scan and pay, correct? Mm. Which means there is somebody scanning the QR and paying, which is the people like Sabzi Wala or Chroma physical outlet. but if you see the cards industry data 65% transactions happen online hmm which is very counter intuitive to the transactions we are seeing so uh, we are actually increasing the pie uh, of spends we are not cannibalizing any of the traditional credit card spends yeah. we are growing the pie yeah that makes sense you're like going into the areas where pay pause is not there and others yeah, yeah. and people are not spending offline that makes sense actually uh, given upi and who who would you say is your target audience like what's the persona like uh, how would you describe it so we we right now are getting very digitally savvy uh, 28 to 35 uh, kind of age group traditionally okay. uh, it's re- very young compared to a cards business cards business traditionally is 35 to 45 years of age okay. group uh, and uh, we uh, why we are say, why i say digitally savvy is because uh all our uh, tra- uh customers are getting onboarded digitally their service requests are getting managed digitally so everything is we, we've got very few uh, telecalling or physical uh, ways of reaching out to the customer so we're getting very digitally so we've got at least we don't hear anything on social media that why don't you do this that etc yeah. which is issue a physical card or can i come and see you uh, somewhere etc so uh, that's why i say uh, we've getting getting a very digitally savvy population and very young kind of customers very interesting is this a wedge into something larger or do you think this in itself will be so big that you can build a large business on on this so uh, we've got a uh, uh, we've got a very good feedback about the clean and clear app that we have right we yes. only do credit card there is no paytm mall or phone pay insurance we are not cross selling we yeah. will not intend to cross sell or we don't want to cross sell it's a very clean interface and all thanks to anup uh, who had actually got his learning from lazy pay and he manages uh, all this from us, uh, for us but uh, the the feedback we've got is please keep it clutter free just have a payment button and a credit card management ka section hmm. so and we don't intend to at all move out of it so we will always be at our heart credit card on credit on upi right now it is credit card hmm. there is credit line regulations that have also come Very so once there is more clarity around how the revenue norms are uh, on it uh, or income norms are there we will probably wedge into that but we will not be like uh, all in one app cross selling clothes and books hmm. or stationery or insurance we no no we don't intend to do any of that and given you talked about the clean you know the clean nature of the app i was just joking with my family yesterday just looking at a few bank websites i was going to central bank of of india where my grandmom has an account i couldn't find the login button <laughs> it was like there were so many things happening on the on the web page it was insane like and it, it there was a button somewhere hidden below which was internet banking it didn't even say login because you expect login to be there right <laughs> uh it's an internet banking it's an it's an incredible website and it is valued twice as much as paytm just fyi central yeah, bank yeah. of india so w- w- what do you i mean talk about this as well what do you think about the importance of design and customer obsession in in the financial services space uh given you guys are so laser focused on it and um do you think banks are like slow moving dinosaurs or is there something more to it given what we've been seeing recently with rbi's regulation on paytm and closing down the bank see i think uh, all fintechs ka jo bhi whatever play that has happened no is improving the customer experience everybody is found Absolutely. a new i think nobody has created a new product it is just improved 
uh, improved various things for the customer, whether it is right. B2B or uh, D2C. Anything that you look at it uh, is more, uh, look at us also, right? This product is existing in the market and is up for takes for everyone. Yeah. We're just making it more simple and better for the customer, right? Right. And this might work or might not work, but at least we'll give it a best shot. Hmm. So uh, I think not, no innovation or no business uh, can survive without a customer obsession around making it Absolutely. convenient or making it interesting. Uh, but customer has to be at the heart. I mean, I've not seen a fintech where, which has come in the market without that uh, play in mind, right? Hmm. But uh, as far as your questions around bank is concerned, uh, see, I right now uh, I'm man I'm I'm also managing single handedly the banking partnerships for Kiwi yes. because and you've been in what? banks before as well. Although yeah, they're yeah. like more blue chip banks than the traditional PSUs. Absolutely. But 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 still, like I think a lot of people underestimate how nimbly some banks move yes. given the construct that they have to operate around. For example, people love SBI, even though they make so many jokes about lunch and all. Yeah. It is it is a product which has the largest distribution in India, even more than WhatsApp, like in terms of users. Yes. Uh, and it goes physically. So I'm curious to get your view as an insider who is now an outsider to the banking system in some way. What do you think about them? Like, what's the real picture? So uh, things have changed in the last uh, few years uh, mm. th th and there have been ch changes that have been good. Mm. So a couple of uh, banks that I'm, uh, PSU banks, large PSU banks, uh, the likes of uh, uh, PNB, Canara and uh, and Bank of India, these kind of banks. Uh, right. I actually, there is a, uh, one of these banks has a, has made a Digi Parivartan division, mm. which actually are trying to, are wanting to change uh, for better, right? Yeah, like Canada has that Bob, no, Bank of Baroda has that Bob app. Yes, very yes. bad naming, but still, at least yeah. they're trying. So, huh. so that that's just a uh, interface between them and the customer, a app or a website. Hmm. But what I was talking about is that uh, at the core, at head office levels, at their corporate office levels, there are various. These departments are getting formed where they know they have to be ready for the future to get digitally savvy younger population because most of these banks are struggling with the uh, age profile of the customers they are getting. Yeah. But uh, the, there is so much intent into trying to be better. Uh, for example, if you see Canara, they, uh, I think they call it all, all one app uh, or something like that. They've also hired a CDO from a private sector bank, right? Wow. So, uh, so and even Canara, uh, sorry, even PNB, when I, uh, talk to all the CGMs, etc. There is a CGM there who heads the Digi Parivartan division. And uh, in fact, uh, the PNB office is, I, I was awestruck to see it is a, it is a green building. It, it survives on its own energy, in fact, wow. at Dwarka. But uh, the intent to do digital stuff uh, mm. and Digi Parivartan division trying to do that is a welcome change to see, which you wouldn't have seen five, 10 years back. Uh, I think the struggle will be how fast can they do it? The intention mm. is not the issue. It is, you're right. How fast can they do it? And uh, that's because of the amount of approvals and internal processes that they have. Yeah. But, uh, but the attitude change and mindset change in PSU banks is happening for the good. That's awesome. And, right. and do you think that uh, they are kind of coming to a place where you have the right mix of speed and caution because, uh, you know, there is this, famous quote that's quoted by Zuckerberg, which is move fast, break things, Facebook. But yeah, yeah. if you try to move fast and break things in India, RBI breaks yeah, you yeah. is my addition to that. So, so do you think that some fintechs cross the line, overstep, uh, yeah. and you should be a little more cautious? Is there something to learn from all of this? Uh, actually, uh, at least my boss used to say, and uh, I'm trying to use Hindi here, ki shuru hmm. to karo. See, hmm. uh, don't be patient, shuru karo. And it might take three months, six months or whatever. It will happen. Hmm. But those three months, six months are precious enough to iron out all these governance or compliance issues, but do it properly. Hmm. Uh, in, in, in all these large banks have realized that uh, a, a, a deal or a, or a relationship to fructify might take six months. But hmm. when you work with large banks, right? you are assured that they will not tread the gray area, right? Hmm. So that if you, if you are fine waiting for that much period of time, 
and having a absolutely zero error business i think that's a better situation to be rather mm. than just trying to be acting smart and uh, trading into the wrong side of compliance and what that's what i think about no that makes sense i mean i agree what do you think about the rbi do you think it is not startup friendly or is it startup friendly i know it's a loaded question i'm asking you but uh, just want to understand from you uh, how do you think they operate what what's what's your understanding of how the rbi thinks about fintechs so a uh, man i i have interacted with rbi for at least 10 15 years mm. and i have i've seen all the uh, uh, most of the departments and i am i am guaranteeing you there is for them customer is the paramount customer right. is paramount right correct so whether they introduced uh, chip and pin transactions right mm. to uh, avoid frauds or any other decisions that they've taken which is tap and pay to make it more convenient or tokenization of card there is no decision where customer is not at the center mm. of the decision wo aap hi ka interest protect kar rahe hain when they are taking right. that decisions it's how you take it how you t- how you take it or what opinion you make you can have your opinion but i have you would have also seen that there is not even a single decision or guideline that has come where customer hasn't gained hmm. so uh, so that is why i i really respect uh, all the people there right we have yeah. we have inter- interacted from the manager level to the senior most level it, they everybody discusses uh, everybody tells their uh, in that uh, in that team tells their uh, perspective and then uh, is when a decision is taken so uh, and and th- th- this is the true this is the case which is true for all banks or any corporates right any mm. decision is uh, with customer at, at its heart right? right so i i really respect that organization in that manner and no, that makes you- sense that makes sense i i actually agree with you i think um at least we've been seeing this unfold i have noticed that they will not do anything that is not thought through or without warning it is not like right. all of these so, things just happened suddenly i'm sure there's enough background so maybe uh, in our time no when i was the cards head for if i remember i was with i was i think stanchard cards head at that mm. point of time and uh, the they had called us to discuss chip and pin matlab hmm. with every chip transaction you will have to enter the four digit pin hmm. and we all went ki sir us mein to kabhi nahi hota ye wahan pe sirf hmm. chip chalta hai chip and signature hai you just hmm. chip sign and go off till date hmm. by the way us is not fully chip in yes correct yeah and uh, europe is also not that they said no no we want to do it just just go with the go with us and work with us i am telling you 90% of the frauds are not happening because of chip and pin transaction today hmm. i mean it it was the biggest boon that the industry could have got, uh, got. yeah no absolutely i mean and I, i it's amazing at upi scale i think upi is not processing a trillion dollars of worth of trans- yeah, yeah. transaction volume the amount of fraud that happened on upi is minuscule yes at that scale and just imagine it is such a low friction fast method which yeah, is ripe for fraud in most cases but it isn't so i i remember like reading this piece maybe a few years ago where i was like hey you're saying ki upi has had 17 crores or 20 crores some amount i don't remember the exact magnitude but it was about this range just divided by the total volume or value and you'll realize that it's it's a rounding error which yeah, is more than ha wo kahin bhi nahi dikhega yeah so 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 i say i think this is true for rbi this is also true for sebi i have seen that they keep the retail investor at mind with everything they do uh, so in some ways the regulator is very uh, retail focused yes. almost all regulators which is i think a good thing um and india needs to operate differently i mean uh, the us probably has a more free hand i think in india the stage we are at as a country maybe so much Uh, we need some guardrails, especially with finance. Um, so, what are priorities for you? Maybe you know, I won't ask a very long-term question because you're a very young yeah. company today. Uh, maybe for the next few years, uh, what, what's the focus going to be? So, uh, right now we are focused on getting on uh, getting on couple of more banks, right? So we can service uh, many more customers. Hmm. Uh, we want to uh, 
we are clear we want to uh, enable issuance of rupee cards we want to be the largest issuer of rupee cards yeah uh, because that's the business that india is made of right uh, that's something that we can take pride on correct hmm. so we want to be one of the largest issuers of rupee cards uh, active rupee card spenders etc all key indicators in the right place so all our decisions right now uh, uh, within the organizations are uh, this is the north star for us this is the paramount focus uh, that we want to achieve in the next couple of years i understand and to close out our podcast why we call this founders unfiltered what's one piece of unfiltered advice or feedback you received in your journey uh, either as an entrepreneur or as, or as a career banker that really changed your perspective and brutal honest is is good you don't need to name the person or you know where you got the feedback from no actually i have made uh, so ek to 20 years mein na itne log you may uh, make friends with etc mm. uh, but i ha- i spoke to all my bosses uh, during okay. this period of time and sabne ek hi cheez kaha tha tu aage badh hum tere sath hai hmm. and and that was somehow the uh, say thing that everybody said nobody said ki tu mat kar kyun is stage pe ye pange le raha hai hmm. what will you do and every it was it was just so heartening to hear that ki tu aage badh hum tere saath hai tu fikr mat kar bas tu aage chalte ja so that was the most precious advice that uh, tilted me to crossing that uh, amazing so it was good good feedback that made you take this call yes so thank yes. you thank you so much mohit it was an amazing discussion especially on credit and credit cards i think you know if we wanted to we could have discussed just on the credit card yeah, yeah. alone uh, but thank you so much for sharing openly congratulations on this new journey of yours and uh, we are all hoping that you grow and you know leave the mark that you intend to make over the next 10 years thank you thanks a lot it was entertaining and it was insightful i love talking to youngsters thank uh, you it just opens my eyes a lot but thank you for this thank you